Salmonia. Now I have about 16 forts and three castles existed. First castle built in Ghana is the one in Elmina, built by the Portuguese around 1482, being the oldest, the largest, the biggest castle in the country, 534 years old. Second castle is Nakra, Christiansburg Castle in Osu, built by the Danes, Denmark, 1662. But Christiansburg is not open to the public on commercial basis because it was the office of our president. So recently, just about three to four years ago, when the president moved to a new palace, Blackstaff House. This is the youngest and the third castle, Cape Coast Castle, built by the British. 1665, they started building the castle. 351 years old, very old, but the structure is still strong. Surprisingly, the initial castle like inside here has no cement, no annual roads. Meaning the whole structure was like in here. When we took over, we plastered and painted the castle. Used building materials like the samples you saw in the building as soon as you took them about 50 years to build the castle. The stages, because no machinery all done by human labor, manpower. All these castles I mentioned, and even most of the fault, were slave posts. The Europeans brought our forefathers as captives, held them in the dungeons till the time the ships came and loaded them abroad. In this castle, there is a big hall upstairs called Palava Hall, and Palava Hall was the slave market. There were European doctors, nurses, merchants, company representatives in there. They displayed gun, gunpowder, mirror or looking glasses, tobacco, sugar, rum, cups, brassworks and others in the Palava Hall. And those captives brought to the castle by middlemen were first sent to the Palava Hall. Please bear in mind that the Europeans started getting captives by raiding and kidnapping. But later, some of our own people, chiefs, traditional rulers, prominent personalities, became suppliers of captives. But they were not bringing everybody. They rather brought prisoners of war. People were captured from war first. As you may know, there was nothing like Ghana, nor Togo, without political boundaries. There were tribes, kingdoms, ethnic groups. All these groups wanted to expand their boundaries, get vast land for agriculture. It's that they were fighting among themselves. If, for instance, I'll be fighting his kingdom or ethnic group over a parcel of land. If I defeat him, I will imprison the youth, sell them to the Europeans for gun gun powder. So next time, I'll get the submachines to fight against the opponent. And we still have so many tribal, ethnic conflicts and wars in our country. Yeah. Every debtors, criminals, orphans, people paid to kingdoms as annual or yearly tribute. The Europeans sometimes used the sea. They deceived some of the locals. They told them, let's go inside our ships and have fun. The locals understood, packed their drums and other instruments, went with them. And as they were enjoying, they gave them a lot of alcoholic drinks. They chained them and they time their lives to go the high seas. Let's go to our home countries. We will give you better lives. They ended up working for them. Wherever they got them, many from West Africa, from different racial stocks like the proud Fantis, the warlike Ashantis, the gentle Madingos, the creative Jubas, the Igbos and others. That's cool to get. They matched them yeah, sure. They walked in chains and shackles. Some of them died on the way. But just imagine walking from Kumasi to Cape Coast, which is just about 220 kilometers away. And some of them came far, 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 far beyond Kumasi. And those who made the journey were brought along the coastline. So in this castle, the first point of call was the Palava Hall. So they took them there for doctors, nurses to test them to determine their strength. After human beings were exchanged for gun, gun powder, to arms, arms according to their strength. Meaning human beings were reduced low, low to the level of commodities. Now to the bots upstairs, they were brought down here, burnt marks on them for easy identification before they were marched into the dungeons. They stayed in the dungeons here for days to months, depending on the time a captive arrived here and the time his or her ship was set off, meaning there was not a fixed time for the captives. Some of them spent a few days, some of them spent a couple of weeks. And during the peak season, a ship came every two weeks. But in the season, they could be in the dungeons for about three months. When the ships came, they were loaded, sent them to Brazil, Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, Colombia, America, Suriname, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, Antigua and others, to work on sugar cane, tobacco, cotton, coffee, cocoa plantations, rice, filter, and mines. 
some were, some were domestic servants. Few were sent to Europe, mainly to do construction work. The men were here, the men were down there. Right above the male dungeon, the room up with three windows facing you was first English church in the country. <laughs> church. <laughs> to narrow the church above the slave dungeon. The name was Society for the Propagation of the Gospel, SPG Church. Any question? Yes, the ones who were sick. What did they do to them? If they checked them and it wasn't so well. Some of them were freed, but those were somehow fed were bought and they were working in the castle as domestic or in house slaves. Cooking, okay. fetching water, fetching firewood, taking care of those in the dungeons. So how many how how, much, how many how many times did they feed our ancestors? Ah, we are going day? down to talk about all those things. Oh, okay. So let's go down to the male dungeon now. It slopes three steps down. Can was being in darkness for some time, going down to see the sun. The sun rays affected the eyes of some of the captives. There are five chambers in the male dungeon. Five. One, two, three, four, five. This is the first chamber. Each of one chamber like this had about 200 men. Hey, was 200 men stayed here. About 16 by 32 feet square. So the five, from this very chamber to the last one, 1,000 men. This particular one was called strong chamber for those who were very strong, both physical and mentally. Because they were strong in order not to influence the ordinary ones to plan a revolt, they were chained. Put the chains in those small holes on the wall. Long chains against the wall and again locked them up. There were many, so sometimes the dungeon became hot. When the dungeon was hot and they were making noise, they poured water on them. From the bigger house up to cool down the temperature. 30% estimatedly died only in the dungeons because contagious diseases spread very fast. Once in a while, they allowed some of the living to pack the bodies in bags or sacks, adding one of the cannonballs down into the ocean. They added the cannonball so that the body would settle. So sometimes the living struggle with dead bodies. They were doing everything to themselves in the dungeon. They were defecating here, urinating, vomiting. They were eating, they were sleeping here. So they were in their mess. The trenches on the floor served as drainages. Rain water comes even now to the direction of the wind, normally from the coast. And the water was washing away phases, urine, vomit, food particles, and many others to the trenches down to the sea. But the channels here choked, covered, because little amount of green water comes here. Did that feces, urine, vomit, covered the whole floor like a carpet to this level. Yeah. Archaeologists came from the University of Ghana and they excavated this chamber. Out of that excavation, they had chains, shackles, ropes, branded iron they used on the captives. They gave them food normally twice a day but little, little food just to sustain them. And normally, the weaker ones working permanently in the castle were bringing food for those in here. But sometimes, when those here were hungry and the food was not coming, they became very aggressive. So to avoid attacks, they did not bring the food in. They rather dropped food from poles like this down here. And those who were interested struggled for the food in the faces, in the shoulder, in the front. They were doing the same thing on the ships. When they went to the new world, they were dropping food from the middle of the ships down for the captives. If the walls here have some map, they could have narrated it better to us what actually took place here. But they say walls have years, but they don't have money to talk. Mm -hmm. The company will be embossed on the iron, heated to red hot. Mm -hmm. When the ships came, they were selected and counted according to the max. Hence, this open for more light to see the branded marks. After that, those who were strong enough to go to the Americas to work walked in a tunnel from here to the door of no return. The entrance is blocked off with the wall here. They closed the entrance in the year 1833. That is when the British passed a law to abolish slave trade in their possessions and territories, including the castle. 1833, they closed the entrance to signify that slavery is over by the British. When we go out, we shall see open parts of the tunnel. This is a shrine, local deity. Africans were religious, worshipping the Almighty. To date, it's like this, before introduction of Islam, Christianity, and other religions. This castle 
is built on a big rock. Cape Coasters were worshipping the Almighty to the rock. But when the British came and built a castle, they were not allowing them to come out to worship. They came for these two stones as part of the big rock to the town. They worshipped the shrine in town. After the British, they performed rituals, brought back the stones, they worshipped the shrine again. Normally, come and meet the priest, the one in charge, you know, but he didn't come today. That is why there are stools and chairs for those who come here to worship and consult. So I mean, the shrine is still active. The Europeans needed more men than women to do the work. So they had this chamber and the opposite one. And the two chambers had about 300 female captives and children a little above 13 years. The British preferred those within the ages of 13 to 35. Each chamber neither 150. They also defecated the year, urinated, vomited, menstruated. And one sad thing was when they had their menses, everything would be flowing on them, flowing, 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 to, to end and dry up because there was nothing like something prepared for them. They kept the slept here. The floor not excavated. So you can imagine what we are standing on. Light ventilation from the holes. The British sometimes came in, selected some of the women, and they raped them. Those selected, they allowed them to wash down, give them food, dressed up after to their bedrooms. Out of that, some of them became pregnant. They built stone houses in town with nurses and midwives. Because of the conditions, most of them had miscarriages, and the few that were able to sustain the pregnancies were sent there. They took care of them. Few weeks after delivery, the mothers who were weak were freed. Those who were strong enough were brought back later they were shipped off. As for the babies, majority of them died, and the few that survived, they started the school, the Cape Coast Castle School. Some of them grew up, became workers here, secretaries, clerks, interpreters. They sent some abroad, and some of them became supervisors. Supervising the captain or the slaves working on the plantations because they were having like a scale. Some of the Europeans named their children. Some locals also named their children after some of these Europeans. These are some of the reasons why we have many European names along the coastline of West Africa. Ghana is not an exemption, especially in Cape Coast. Smith, Grant, Wood, York, Johnson, Jackson, Jefferson, Wilson, Ferguson, Dawson, other sons coming from around. But if you go inland, a place like Ashanti region, Kumasi and its surroundings, a typical Ashanti could hardly bear a name like Johnson. Your names like Chemantain, Edusipoku, Edubari, Kufo, Bafo, say and others, being typical of Ghanaian names. Any question? And you cannot do a tour of Ketos Castle without going to the door. Our forefathers went to the door and never came back. They passed to the door and in their minds they said bye bye to Mother Ghana, Mother Africa. And the moment they passed through the door, they lost everything. They lost their names, cultures, families, religion, languages. They even lost their dignities as human beings. Most of them died. And those who survived in the dungeons passed through the door and they went away. Why most of them died? During the wars, raiding, kidnapping, to get them, some of them died. Coming down to the castles, they walked wild animals, attacked the some of them. Some of them fell into pits and rivers. Those who became weak or sick on the way, soldiers or guards killed them to serve as an example to the others. In the dungeons, some of them passed away. Some of them preferred committing suicide to going to unknown destinations to suffer again. So on the boat, some of them decided to jump overboard, and they were chained together. About 20 in a row on the chain, for instance, my uncles and uncles, if I decide to jump overboard and don't take care, I'm going to drag out of you to the sea. During the journey to America, some of them died on the ships and they were dumping the bodies into the ocean. Due to that, sharks were following the ships and they were feeding on the dead bodies of the captives. When there were food shortages on the ships, they dragged the same sharks to feed those on board. So they were eating each other's flesh in the direct. They were raping the beautiful ones in the castles and those who were seen pregnant on the ships were also dumped into the ocean. Sometimes when they saw that, the ships were overloaded. They just offloaded some of the captives into the ocean to prevent sinking and everything. Researchers have said in total, the Europeans bought about 60 million enslaved Africans in a business which lasted for about 300 to 400 agonizing years. Out of that 60 million, there's only about 10, 11, 12 million 
dependent on the researcher made the journey across the Atlantic. We live 12 million, made the journey, about 48 million died. And 48 million people is far, far more than the population of Ghana. About twice the population of Ghana. That's about 26 to 27 million. The original door was shut in denial. But the British were here even after the slave trade exporting our gold, ivory prices to the same door. That is why it was widened. Shot narrow, chained and shackled captives, bowed down, squeezed themselves one after the other. They passed to the door and never came back. We are also going to pass to the door and return. But I promise you, we are going to return. Question um, yes, Do you know how many slaves they took to Britain? Because I know a lot went to America, but some went to Britain. You know, Britain, those who were sent to Europe, very, very, very few. Yeah? Because they had the plantations in the New World. So a few were okay. sent to Europe to do construction, construction works. So most of them were sent to Britain. But very difficult to get the exact number. Mm.